Well, we've all had um, lunch, we've had food, we're eating and we're good to go. So um, mine is going to be talking about um, the strategy for commodity contamination and because um, I'm preparing for my old age, you know what I mean, because I need to be sitting on this. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason why I'm very, very passionate and obsessed with commodity. So, um, <laughs> so um, basically, um, the learning outcome from this is going to be for us all to have a good understanding of and the improvement strategies, as I said, for commodity contamination, we're going to try and see if we can evaluate um, these strategies um, using the knowledge and skills based practices, and um, let's see if we can try and cover that, and um, to um, have a good understanding of um, the behavior of change and some of the human factors of non compliance within um, commodity contamination. Um, the reason why I've mentioned that, because, as it, it says exactly, it does exactly what it says on the team, one seal. Anybody remember one seal? Yes. 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 All right. No, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> They've not paid me, by the way. So um, it's a little bit wordy, um, these slides, because um, I didn't um, have the time to go back and um, put my artwork onto it. And uh, hopefully, we'll try and improve it. So, mainly, the context um, for this, um, uh, uh, this session is we're going to have a good review um, of commode tips and um, being clean, um, tips being placed on commode and stored as clean. And then um, what I did was look at six clinical areas and um, in four different care groups. And uh, my colleague, um, Rashmi, there, who will probably be familiar with some of these. We've got the HAU, we've got surgery, medicine, and hematology. Um, it's not as to everybody there, but it's just like individual people. Um, some of my stakeholders um, who partake in providing them um, with the commodes and um, have a regular cleaning of the commodes immediately after patient use. That was the conversation. And um, I wasn't able to get everybody into one room, but I spoke to um, them either in twos or spoke to them as individuals. So the discussion was on how to clean the commode, ask them um, to talk me through the process, um, um, the step-by-step -step process, because um, again, you don't get people if you don't have any treats in your hands. And um, ask them who cleans the commode, how often are the commodes clean, and then we identify some of the gaps um, um, with commode decontamination because it's important and then um, see if we can create some opportunities for a good solution and um, trying to maintain the most important thing, sustainability um, in commodity contamination. So what was the problems um, from the conversations had? Um, thorough cleaning of commodes um, in the healthcare setting remains an ongoing um, and systematic issue, we know that. Um, um, we all know that uh, uh, one of the um, leading causes of course infection um, um, in hospital um, environments is a lack of adequate cleaning of equipment such as commode being one of those there. And I gave a few examples like no virus C D and any diarrhea patients um, will require um, commode um, to be provided to that patient. However, do we have enough commodes within the wards or within the clinical areas? You might find that most wards have an average of 2.4 commodes and then you'll have um, bays which have got four to six patients and then only two side rooms. So if you have um, an outbreak there, you have a serious issue. Are you going to go or come out from another ward? Probably not. Um, so therefore, um, it's appropriate to create a system that um, uh, visually identify commode um, that has been cleaned and fit for use, and which we tend to do from our audits. Uh, again, what do you call it? Uh, what's the problem continuing with that? We say um, the thorough cleaning of the commodes cannot be completed immediately after use due to the staff workload. Everybody knows that. Sometimes the patients, um, will, the call there will go, staff will buy the commodes and then they don't go back to that patient. Or if they get the um, commodes away from the patient, they get rid of the bedpan and dispose of um, any fecal matter in there or the commode will be left. Because somebody's going to tell you, I'm going to come back to it. They, they will reassure you that the call bell is still going, I'm going to come back to it. Different types of commodes used um, within um, some of the wards. Some of the wards have got different types of commodes, which I mentioned in my last um, presentation, because in our organization, we still got about four different types of commodes, which can cause problems. Some of these have got many accessory parts, and which are difficult to clean, and um, sometimes even uncleanable, which we all know. We all know about the wheels, and being a specific example to that. Some patients who are located commodes will not um, notify staff. Um, and they don't use the call bill, as I mentioned, immediately when um, they're finished. Because some of the patients are sort of like self-sufficient. All the staff needs to do is just give them the commodes, 
um, leave them in the bay or in the room, or do they come back to it? And um, that commode will stay in there eventually. What happens is that um, fecal matter will stain or stay dry on the commode, which makes it very, very difficult, or sometimes you wouldn't even know um, that the commode is there and dirty. me. Broken or damaged commodities, um, commodes um, with visible crevices, which we uh, all know about um, commodities because it's plastic. Um, over cleaning because of the sporicidal wipes can, um, if the uh, plastics are not made of quality uh, products, will um, cause um, damage to the commode. Um, staff acknowledging commodes are not always clean because expectations um, for other colleagues to um, be contaminated at the end of the day. How many times, which we said. So once you use the commode and then you leave it there, you're thinking, Nine out of ten times, the nurse would leave and say the HCA is going to come and clean it. It's always the case um, that the nurse will be too busy have to return back to the um, to the patient, and then the expectation is they will have a dedicated or passionate um, HCA who would come around and say, okay, I'll do the cleaning of the commodes. But does that often happen? What happens if that um, staff member is, is off sick? Yeah, very naughty, very, very naughty. Yeah, so again... Um, continuing with what is, um, um, what, why is it a problem? Why is it a problem? Because it's going to be a problem because of all the obvious reasons that we know about already. The high infection rate, um, cross-contamination, um, longer stay in hospital, immunocompromised patients, especially our cancer patients, liver patients, anyone with weak immune system, um, poor quality care, uh, frequently shared commode, um, not having enough commode, which I mentioned earlier. Um, Lack of training, um, someone who has not worked within the healthcare settings, and I think that's some of the common things that uh, uh, some of our, uh, um, some of us have discussed here. Because we might have people who have come into um, the healthcare setting for the first time, and um, they've been placed onto a clinic, into a ward, and then maybe one of their first two tasks within the first few hours was to help with cleaning commodes. But have they, has anybody actually given them a proper induction or training? Probably not. And um, they're going to show them the poster, say, hey, hey, that's the poster there, follow the SOP or the, um, the cleaning protocol, but um, no proper um, adequate training has been given. So, um, who really creates all of these problems that I just talked about, our stakeholders? And um, <laughs> why, why did I say they create the problem? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure they hear me. They didn't see me right that far. So, yeah. so, uh, these are our nurses, and this could be student nurse, our registered nurses, um, our nursing associates, uh, healthcare assistants, or our CSWs, our physios um, who tend to use the commode sometimes um, to assist the patient, um, our OTs, rarely, but sometimes you'll find out that these commodes will be swapped as um, wheelchairs. So not necessarily assist the patient to the toilet, but they use it to um, go and do off their, their OT exercise or their physio exercise. And then they will return back thinking, okay, patient has not used the commode for any um, urinal purpose or phys uh, uh, physical reasons. It's just for physio um, trips to the staircase. I don't need to clean it. That's a problem there. Um, other people that might come to the ward who are not necessarily regular parts of the ward, and you tend to see that quite a lot, your RMNs. So you'll have your elements that will come there. Sometimes you'll have um, family members who will visit because um, you'll have curious family members who might want to assist their relatives um, where there is no availability of um, side room facility and suites facility or the bay where the, their, their, their family member is cohorted does not have a toilet. So they go on thinking, okay, I've been coming to the water about three or four times. Let me just go and grab the commode from the sleeve room. Their, their relative will use the commode and then they'll return it and uh, not say anything. So the commode is there, very nice and clean and dirty. And what you also tend to find out that you still have the label of it as well. Um, so I just thought, let me just throw a definition in about service improvement. Um, and um, again, we all know this, um, this um, the continual process um, to improving the effectiveness and efficiency of any product or services that we develop by the user uh, company or the organization, in this case of the healthcare settings. Um, it can also be defined as the, um, the combined and um, unseason effort for, for everyone to make um, changes that will be um, lead to better patient outcomes um, in, within the healthcare setting, better system and performances, um, and better professional development learning. And this is by uh, Dr. Elvin and David Off in 2007. So it seems I found this definition very interesting. That's why I thought let me just chuck that in there. So, um, okay, so uh, this is my stakeholder matrix there, and I thought, okay, what can we do? Who are the people? 
then when I'm, I was listening to everyone else, and that's the advantage of going last, you tend to think. <laughs> um, so you've been updating this. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. So uh, there, my paperwork has been very, oh, very I'm going to make you go first next time. <laughs> <laughs> so I've had, I've had two benefits. Please don't take it away from me. <laughs> so, um, don't what, worry. At least you've listened. Yeah, so what I've done is um, I've, I was thinking um, in terms of my high interest group, um, who was missing in there? My, my deep sea and my deputy deep sea should be up there as well. I head of the um, head of nursing and also director of sites because um, she's somebody that takes passion um, with um, environmental contamination. She's also obsessed with um, commode cleaning because whenever she does um, the walk around, she always wants to check about the commode. So I'll add um, those um, three people onto the I interest um, um, group there. And um, for the high interest and, uh, and um, uh, 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 what do you call it, and high power people, you've got your ward managers, your junior assistants, um, your infection control nurse or practitioners there. And then um, when you come to um, the low power and um, low interest, um, but I put the clinical housekeepers, but I think that's absolutely wrong because I would want to meet them here. Mm -hmm. Because my clinical housekeepers are very, very influential on the ward because they're also the IPC. Um, champions as well. Um, sometimes you might have a ward staff who's an IPC champion as well, so I'll probably move them there, and then probably that would leave me with nothing there, but I'm not really too fast. Uh, so again, this is a very exhaustive list of um, low interest, or um, a, a low power, or high interest, and because they kind of really, really need to be there. And the only person that would <laughs> think of moving out will probably be these two people, which are our family members, because they will have a very, very low power, and then their interest level will probably also be low. So uh, going going forward, um, I'll be telling <coughs> these two people, because nine out of ten times, they'll probably not clean the commode when they use it, they'll be telling, because um, the trouble with arguments is always there. Um, so in the world of process marking, what did I, decide, what did I do? So um, due to the difficulty in being together, which I explained, um, it was a five days process for me. I spoke to um, a couple of HCAs and uh, a couple of allied health professionals, uh, promised to get them something from Max and Spax in, in, um, in the hospital. And a uh, uh, staff nurse on day three, and then I went back and I spoke to um, HCA and um, a student nurse. And um, on day five, I spoke to uh, 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 one of the staff nurses, but I did also speak to a clinical housekeeper on day five. But I didn't put them there because um, we didn't actually conclude this um, the conversation because uh, they found themselves too busy assisting the ward. So as the days gone by, what happened? Um, no staff groups produced the same um, step by step process when when they took me through it. Um, um, even identifying the correct commode um, to allocate or give um, to the patient had a very response. Um, um, the uh, various response um, from. Step 17 to step um, 21, when we come to look at my draft um, process mapping, we will probably make that very clear where I identify that course and different um, staff groups I spoke to. So that's a cleaner version, but um, and also about an unfinished version. Uh, what did the stakeholders say? And uh, the, the whole idea was to try and provide um, the commode and decontaminate it at the end. So that's um, obviously what we wanted to do. The first thing to do is you want to provide the commode to the patient. So you want to thoroughly clean, um, you want to obviously clean your hands in that process first. And um, you select a commode which is um, taped um, and um, is uh, fit for use. And then ensure that the commode um, is correctly clean and tag, which I've mentioned there. Remove um, any, um, the green tag. Uh, this was debatable um, between whether to remove the green tag um, before going to the patient or remove the green tag um, at the patient, in front of the patient, just to be assured because literally that was not, um, they, they were not clear in terms of the people that I spoke to. Some of them would actually say, oh, when, when I get to the patient, then I'll click the tag. And then what we've got to remember, sometimes we have a green sticker, which the sticker then stays. And then when the commode comes back, the green sticker still indicating on the on the on the, on the commode and then you're thinking okay that commode is not clean anymore and um, you provide the patient with the commode and then um, if the patient needs assistance you offer any help ensure that the commode is left clean after patient use and uh, after patient time as has finished you recover the uh, or discharge sometimes the 
and the reason for this is sometimes the commode can stay with the patient for a longer period of time, so you find out that that same commode can go back and forth into the patient, so <coughs> um, hence the reason why you see the um, commode stays there until the patient's um, recovery or discharge. Uh, then now what we want to do is decontaminate that commode, so uh, where they collect PP to handle the commode. Again, there was a lot of gray areas there from the, um, um, the stakeholders, the staff group I spoke to, some people not understanding, well, am I going to keep my apron on? Am I going to um, have my gloves on coming out from the, um, the bay or the side room and then coming into the um, sluice room, depending on where the sluice room is positioned in the clinical area. Identifying a suitable area to um, decontaminate your commodes and um, uh, ensure that the surface area is clean and um, you want to use the correct arm um, wipes, which is the red sporicide of wipes. The problem there you got, most people will you find out that will clean the commode um, without actually um, take, taking the parts apart. They'll just clean the commode in its physicality as, uh, um, as it is. Um, but those who talk me through the process will actually they mention about you have to disassemble all the, um, the commode parts and then um, put the parts apart and then you start working your way from clean to the dam from, from the most um, dirtiest part of the commode first. They said, um, talk, that's what some people said. Some people will actually clean from clean to dirty. Again, that dependence upon um, the staff group that you spoke to. Some some of them went from well, clean first. We want to get rid of the after getting rid of the, the feces. We want to clean all the dirty parts, and then some have said clean from clean to dirty. Allow the parts to um, air dry, and um, obviously, and then move the patient, um, uh, and move uh, 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 um, the PP um, as opposed to. Um, into the appropriate bin and then dispose and then obviously you clean your hands. Um, so we then move on to um, pay attention to the underside. These are what additional people, and specifically if I have to give credit to that would be um, the HCAs which I spoke to mentioned that you have to pay attention because they were more specific in, uh, in terms of um, the, the, the cleaning process. And then you discard the soil wipes. So you need to identify where the wipes is soiled in between that and then you clean and then um, you change the wipes as you go along. Not many people mentioned that I have to do this um, from the few people that I spoke to there. And then you want to store the commode into um, a designated area. That can be a challenging because if you put the limitation in there, clean all the areas um, used for commodes and decontamination. And then um, obviously what you want to do, go back to where you start, almost you make sure that the commode um, is um, tagged, signed and labeled and dated, and then um, ready for use. Um, well, that's what the process is so far, and um, as I said, so what were the um, concerns and the gaps that I, we identified from that, from collecting um, this new commode? On provision of this commode to the patients, it was noted that um, the commode that were labeled with clean, um, clean green sticker uh, were not removed, and I mentioned this earlier. So if somebody's got a tape, obviously you'll break the tape, but if somebody's using the, the um, clean, um, clean uh, green sticker, they will tend to leave the sticker there and then push that commode into the patient's area is that the correct thing to do. And um, returning that commode sometimes you might leave it there. So for example, if Siobhan has cleaned the commode last and then I will provide the commode to, um, sorry, Siobhan, <laughs> to the patient and then I will tend to leave it there. So if somebody comes to audit and it looks like the last um, person that cleaned the commode but did not clean it properly would have been Siobhan and that tends not to be a good thing to do. So staff needs to be aware of that. Staff were not visibly checking the commode that um, they ensure that they are thoroughly clean before giving to patients. So um, that's something that we identify, a gap that we identify there. And hygiene um, um, before handling um, clean commode. It's important to get into the habit of, even if the commode is being stored as clean, hand hygiene is, needs to be performed as best practice. So um, that was not mentioned, as I said, except for one HCA who mentioned that. And uh, carrying on with that, and the concerns and gap, but this time on removal of the commode, uh, of the used commode, one of the um, gaps um, identified as well as varied option opinions on PPE where in the, um, when the commode um, is allocated to the patient in the bay and that of the patient in the side room. Staff who are um, assisted um, the patients after commode spoke about handling the door handles, which I mentioned earlier. Should they still be wearing their gloves? Should they not still be wearing their gloves with the same pair of gloves? Handling um, Hand hygiene before handling clean commode was not mentioned by all staff. Again, as I mentioned, just like that one HCA. 
And then this time, the concerns on decontaminating. What do we see? Uh, what, do we do, what do we say in terms of during the process of decontamination of the common? Not all of the staff agree that the common parts will be disassembled before cleaning. Um, don't know why. Um, wheels will not be cleaned down if not visibly soiled because um, the correct tools are not available because you know commode wheels are a reservoir for gathering hair, threads, all sorts of things are filled. You understand? So everything you can find, you find at the end of the commode. So if you have a diarrhea patient, that can be um, a good, good um, station for where you can find that loose tool will have on itself there for quite a long time and it's easy for any um, cause contamination to take place. All of the commode, um, the commode frame not clean on every occasion. So that was really, really key because based on what they were saying to me, when they returned the commode, they would clean the seats, they would clean the, um, the, the, the important parts which they deem important, the back rest and everything. But the concentration of cleaning the entirety of the commode, including the frame, not fun because guess what? Somebody's going to do it at the end of the week. That's what they claim. Or somebody will do it at the end of the night. So um, staff mentioned that all and commode cleaning will be performed at night, you know, because you've got to get out the money checklist. So what happens next? Um, we have to implement routine monitoring of the commode decontamination of each um, on a on each shift um, by the nurse in charge responsible daily checklist for commode cleaning by the stakeholders users routinely clean and commode immediately after patient use. Thoroughly cleaning of the commode decontamination. Um, and the, co and the commodity contamination and place for fogging immediately when the opportunity arrives. That's something that needs to be done because commod doesn't often get um, fogged uh, because if there is an outbreak in an area or there's a PII, what we need to do is ensure that um, commod after cleaning, chuck it into one of those rooms, get it fogged, and um, to reduce any of the bio burden of uh, microorganisms for uh, presence on that commod, it just helps as well. Yeah, of um, course, we, that yeah. will be of zero value if they're not clean. It, well, they, exactly. It needs to be thoroughly clean first, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, we produce standard protocol, um, the S uh, SOP commode for cleaning, highlighting clear step-by-step -step process in principle of tutorial because um, uh, with our current commode process, if I want, just want to draw that, it's very, very wordy and not pictorial. Sometimes pictorial might help a little bit. Educate new starters on the, um, and the new trained staff old staff uh, on new commod SOP. And um, so carrying, out, uh, what hap uh, carrying on with what happened next, uh, you have to revisit the, clinic and the clinical areas to ensure that new standards are sustained, undertake unannounced monitoring of all the commod cleaning, observation, as well as a practical check. So you can stand there, watch somebody clean a commode, or you can um, just actually go in there and do a practical check i.e. tilt the commode over physically, making sure that you check that those commodes routinely. Uh, feedback findings um, immediately. Don't leave it to say when I go and then I'll send an email because with commodes you want to give that feedback um, in time to um, the ward staff um, that are responsible. Um, try to see if you can put um, a PDSA cycle together. I, don't, I know we're not going there because I don't want you to say that. No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> but right. I just okay. took yeah. I'd rather see your drive diagram, but I guess you haven't got onto that. I've got that there. Oh, you've got that. Yes. Okay. Hey. Yeah, so, um, That's good. Yeah, so the driver diagram basically is um, what do we, what's uh, my, my, my main target yeah. there? So That's it's mostly contamination of commodes used by individuals with um, a transmissible infection disease. So not necessarily any infection disease, but anybody that uses the commode as well. So what we want to do is that commodes are appropriately cleaned um, by the responsible pers um, person in the hospital staff. Um, as mentioned already by stakeholders, commodes are stored in a designated clean space and separate from the, um, the use uh, from used commodes if the space is available because that's a challenge because we're not able to segregate clean and, and uh, used commodes and um, clean commodes are labeled appropriately and uh, and then that means and yes yeah. yeah brilliant so yeah good. Um... <laughs> Uh, primary drivers, that's yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, that's very good. Uh, yeah. You've got a lot of challenges there. Have you thought about doing a video? There were videos about commode cleaning, weren't yeah. there? Yeah. I've, I've done one, yeah. but I, I was told my, my um, head of nursing is too long. Well, yeah, I'm you've got to work. make it. Well, yeah. actually, judging from your presentation, you could, you could cut back. Yeah. You're so passionate about it that yeah. you tend to put lots of extra stuff that is interesting but yeah. wouldn't necessarily help people. Yeah. So, you know, 
I got once I was working on um, people with animation.